So you've had an election. Bully for you. Okay, nerds, it's been about a week since we uh, re-elected President Barack Obama, and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the Electoral College. I've noticed a lot of people don't understand the thing at all. The Electoral College is divided proportionally among the country. That means in a state like California, they have a lot, and in a state like Montana, they have a little. That's determined by population. In the last election, we saw Barack Obama win by a landslide, but really it was only by about three and a half million votes, even though proportionally it looked a lot bigger if you look at just electoral votes. The reason that is is because most states divvy up electors by whomever wins the popular vote in that particular state. In a state like California, even though maybe 30-40% of the population voted Republican, the entirety of the electoral votes go to the winner of the popular vote. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what that means for the future of our country. Full disclosure, in the primary, I voted for Ron Paul. In the general election, I wrote in Gary Johnson. I'm a libertarian. I, I don't like the two-party system. I haven't been a fan of it for six years now, and I'd like to see it eliminated. So this video is meant to explain exactly how we can bring third parties into the fold, because I think it's something that a lot of people misunderstand in this country. If you understood how the electoral college works, you'd probably be a little more inclined to maybe throw your vote towards that third party guy or girl that matches with your convictions a little better. First off, we need to talk about the states that were close. Florida, Ohio, North Carolina, Virginia, and Colorado. All of those states were within 5% of the popular vote of going one way or the other. That means those states are called swing states. So if you have a definite preference for one of the two major candidates, in those states, it actually could make a difference what way you're gonna vote. Albeit it's still very mathematically small, but compared to the rest of the country, it actually could matter and in large numbers would throw it one way or the other. The next tier of states, the gap in their popular vote was between five and 10%. That includes Pennsylvania, Iowa, New Hampshire, Nevada, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Georgia, Michigan, Missouri, and New Mexico. These states, the media tends to tell us are swing states, or at least tries to convince us that they are, because they want to boost their rating. I mean, that's really what it boils down to in these presidential elections. They'll broadcast the most favorable polls to make sure the margin looks a lot thinner than it actually is. But if you live in any of those states, you know what direction the wind is blowing. So it's those states and any state that I didn't mention, you guys need to pay attention right now. I know the guys running for office are gonna tell you your voice is important, I'm here to tell you, from a mathematical perspective, it's almost insignificant. You have to realize over 120 million votes were cast this last election cycle. So if you think your one vote really matters out of 120 million, I don't know what to tell you. I think you might be a little delusional. That's not to diminish the importance of voting. I'm just pointing out that despite what the guys running for office tell you, they're saying that voting is important so everybody votes and hopefully votes for them. Let's talk about those states where the, the gap in the popular vote was 5% or higher. You knew who your state was deciding they would want to be president. In those states, I would say, vote third party. If you're in Texas and you're a Democrat, you know your state's not gonna go Democrat. The vote for a liberal third party candidate that more aligns with your value. If you're in California, you know the state's not going Republican, so why don't you just vote for somebody who's more in line with your values? I'm from Michigan. I kept trying to tell people, your state's not going Republican. It hasn't gone Republican since 1988. Please, vote for someone who's more in line with conservative values. I voted for Gary Johnson because I thought he was a pretty cool guy. He's no Ron Paul, but he's definitely better than Barack Obama or Mitt Romney. So if I have to choose between those two people, I don't want to make that decision. And it makes it a lot easier on me if I can say, oh, but this guy, he actually thinks that, you know, issue A should be this way. And I think that same way too. And I would encourage you, because of the way the Electoral College works, most of the country doesn't designate electors in any kind of proportional system. It's all or nothing. So if your state's going one way, and you want to vote the other way, do it. Because it's not going to matter anyway. This has been a brief summary of what the Electoral College means for you. So what do you think? Comment down below and be sure to hit like and subscribe. Also, 
Don't forget, November 21st is National Bill Murray Day. So take two hours out of your day to watch a Bill Murray movie. I'm going to watch The Life Aquatic with Steve Zissou. So you've had an election. I just had a bowel movement. So you've had an election. Big deal. I've been drunk since 1964.